Hello and welcome to this edition of FYI Weekly, your official source for the latest news and information from the City of Greensboro. The City has appointed Kimberly Sowell as Assistant City Manager. She has been employed with the City since 2015. She is being promoted from Business Division Manager with the Water Resources Department. As a member of the Executive Leadership Team, Sowell will oversee the City's field operations, engineering and inspections, water resources and transportation departments. Sowell began her career with the City's Human Resources Department as an Organizational Development Specialist. She's been instrumental in establishing key city projects such as the Mentor Me program, Water Resources Info Drop program, and the new Employee Onboarding program for Water Resources. Aside from municipal government, Sowell's public administration career dates back to 1994 and the 20 years she served North Carolina A&T State University in various roles, ranging from university treasurer to assistant vice chancellor for student affairs and administration. Sowell earned a Bachelor of Science in Accounting and a Master of Science in Adult Education from North Carolina A&T. In May of 2019, she will complete a Doctor of Philosophy in Leadership Studies from North Carolina A&T State University. Employers throughout the Greensboro community are encouraged to support the Plus One Campaign, an initiative of the Greensboro Youth Employment Mentoring Program, supported by United Way of Greater Greensboro and the City of Greensboro. This campaign requires employers to commit to adding at least one summer youth employment opportunity to their workforce this summer. Employers may submit summer job opportunities now through March 31st, Plus one employers will agree to hire a young person between ages 16 and 24, provide a wage of at least $8 an hour, offer at least 20 hours a week for a duration of seven to eight weeks from June through August. Upon accepting the invitation to participate, employers are asked to submit their Plus One Summer Youth Employment Opportunity online or call United Way to be added to the Plus One Registry. Plus One Summer Opportunities will be posted on the United Way website and promoted throughout the community and on social media to reach youth most in need of meaningful summer work experience. The website will list the company or business name, listing of positions with job descriptions, preferred skills, and contact information for applicants. Have you ever wondered how the U.S. Constitution shapes criminal justice policies? If you answered yes, the Greensboro Criminal Justice Advisory Commission, or GCJAC, is conducting a free workshop you may want to attend. The event entitled Street Law and How the Constitution Affects Criminal Justice in Greensboro will take place from 5.30 p.m. to 7 p.m. on Thursday, March 7th at Elon Law School located at 201 North Green Street. GC Jack is a new board created by the Greensboro City Council to monitor, review, analyze, educate, advise, and report on criminal justice issues and processes that affect Greensboro residents. GC Jack meets at 6 p.m. the third Thursday of each month in the Tannenbaum Sternberger Room located at the Central Library at 219 North Church Street. In an effort to help each of us improve our quality of life, the city has partnered with Cone Health for a series of brief and informative videos designed to inspire you to make better choices when it comes to healthy living. Let's check in with our friends at Cone Health for today's news for your health. 70% of Americans say they want to die at home. And in reality, 70% of Americans die in hospitals and facilities. Hi, I'm Dr. Elizabeth Golding, Medical Director for the Palliative Medicine Team at Cone Health, a member of Cone Health Medical Group. I would like to talk to you today about one of the most important conversations you can have with your loved ones, a conversation about end of life and advanced care planning. There's nothing more heartbreaking for me uh, as a physician to sit down with a family who is in the midst of crisis. They have a loved one who may be nearing end of life, an unexpected heart attack, stroke, uh, or other serious illness. And they have to make decisions about their loved one's care. And that loved one can't speak for themselves. By completing these documents, by having the conversation early, 
you're giving a gift to your family. You're giving them the gift of reassurance that they're acting in a way that you would want them to if your health should deteriorate. It may start at your first visit with your adult doctor. Uh, so you may begin by doing something called a living will or a healthcare power of attorney form. This form really is designed to protect you when you're young, should you have an, a horrible accident, should you have uh, an unexpected uh, serious terminal illness diagnosis, uh, or should you get unexpectedly ill. It will guide your loved ones in <clears throat> making decisions that you would want. As you move forward through your life, there may be points where you need to think about revisiting your advanced directive. And when I say an advanced directive, I'm talking about the forms that support a conversation that you should have with your loved ones. Um, a living will and a healthcare power of attorney are legal documents and they do require signatures, uh, witnesses, and a notary. As you move forward at certain points in your life, uh, maybe even when you renew your driver's license or uh, as you age, uh, perhaps if you have a hospitalization or uh, maybe even your job changes, maybe you are involved in a high-risk job, maybe you're in the military, uh, certain points in your life you need to revisit your advanced directives. One of the things that I always say a good point to revisit your advanced directives is when you enroll in Medicare. And when you enroll in Medicare, you should make sure that you have your documents in place. And that should be a reminder to also have the conversation with your family. At the time of a, a new diagnosis of a serious illness, these things should uh, require some preparation. One of the things we uh, can talk about is how to start that conversation. The first part of that is uh, thinking in your own mind and doing a little preparation before you talk to your loved ones. Uh, so, uh, thinking about what matters to you um, and try to get a plan in place uh, to talk about those things. Uh, it could be uh, at certain uh, points that you think are important, maybe around the holidays when you have your family together, uh, it may be just at the dinner table. Uh, and uh, sometimes I'll say, you know, um, think about somebody else you know who's been really sick. You can use that as a context for the conversation. If, so-and-so isn't doing well, well, I would or would not want those kinds of things. Um, you can also uh, talk about it within the context of um, a, a newly diagnosed health problem. Sometimes family members will be taken back by the conversation. Uh, I remember talking to my 100-year-old grandmother who did not want to have that conversation. Um, but it's really important that we talk about these things because we want to uh, make sure we are doing the right thing for our loved ones. Not what we want, but what our loved ones want. That way, they won't have to live their life wondering, did I do the right thing for my mom? Did I do the right thing for my dad? Did I do the right thing for my wife or my husband? They will know and they will have the confidence that the care that was provided to them at the end of life was the best that it could be. So advanced care planning, is the way to ensure that that actually happens. Thank you for joining me. I hope this has been helpful for you and your family. Please don't wait for a crisis to occur. Start the conversation today about your wishes at end of life. For more information, go to conehealth.com slash advanced directive. I'm Elizabeth Golding with the Palliative Medicine Team at Cone Health. Financial planning and resources are available for the taking to help get renters on the road to home ownership. We'll have that story and more news coming up after the break. Stay with us. Housing Consultants Group, or HCG, is conducting a program aimed at helping residents start financially planning so they will be ready to buy a home in the next 6 to 12 months. The program, called Individual Development Account, or IDA, is based on a national model offering a free information session at 5.30 p.m. on Tuesday, March 5th at the Greensboro Housing Hub located at 1031 Summit Avenue. 
HCG has contracted with the city's Neighborhood Development Department to conduct IDA and other housing counseling services as part of the Housing Connect GSO program. Under the IDA program, potential home buyers first meet with trained HCG counselors to talk about their credit scores, spending behaviors, and time frames for buying a home. Counselors then help set goals for how much money to save, how to save it, and when to buy. Potential home buyers attend a mandatory monthly class on everything they need to know to qualify for home ownership and how to financially keep their home for many years to come. They must also meet once a month in a one-on-one -on -one session with a success coach to review their spending, how close they are to their goal, and what additional changes they may need to make. HCG and the Neighborhood Development staff continue the process with Housing Connect GSO's down payment and closing cost assistance programs. The Neighborhood Development Department is co-sponsoring the 2019 Housing Summit in partnership with the Greensboro Housing Coalition. This year's theme is Prescription for Healthy Communities with a focus on how housing impacts child health. The summit will take place from 8 a.m. to 3 p.m. on Wednesday, March 27th at George K's Event Center located at 2108 Cedar Fork Drive. Attendees will get to hear from and interact with experts on how housing affects our well-being. The goal is to help strategize about what we can do to improve our community through housing interventions, system change, and policy levers. The keynote speaker is Dr. Megan Sandel, the nation's leading expert on how housing impacts child health. Registration for the event is required. To reserve a seat, contact the Greensboro Housing Coalition at 336-691-9521. Planet GSO is a city initiative designed to spark community conversations about how Greensboro should grow and develop in the future. Your input will help the city create a new comprehensive plan or comp plan. A comp plan establishes a vision for the future of a city and then is used as a roadmap to guide a municipality's investments, development, and growth. Greensboro's current comprehensive plan is now 15 years old. The city still wants to hear from the community. The planning department has scheduled a citywide public workshop on Wednesday, March 20th at Central Library. This will give the public an opportunity to gather input on recently revised comp plan goals and a vision statement. More details and time of the workshop will be posted on the Planet GSO website. The website also includes ways to submit input for those unable to attend the March 20th event. Final steps in the comp plan process include city staff drafting specific strategies and policies for achieving the comp plan goals. In an effort to spotlight and celebrate local artists, business owners, community builders, and essentially the next generation of leaders, the city is proud to partner with Action Greensboro to introduce our Made in Greensboro series. This day, we place the spotlight on the musical genius of Daniel Krupe. Daniel Krupe didn't imagine his career path would lead him so quickly to the highest echelons of music administration. Only a few years since completing his college studies, he was hired as the chief operating officer of the Greensboro Symphony Orchestra. Daniel's educational background is in performance. He graduated from the University of Notre Dame with a Bachelor of Arts in Music and then received a master's degree from UNCG in vocal performance with a specialization in opera. Daniel focused on building both a performance and administrative foundation in college, envisioning a long-term goal that involved both. He joined the Greensboro Symphony in 2013 as Director of Development and Public Relations and was named COO in June 2016. Overall, Daniel works to ensure the vitality of the organization, overseeing various aspects such as programming and budgets. Daniel is proud the Greensboro Symphony makes it a priority to be involved in the community. The organization works closely with Guilford County Schools, Guilford Child Development, and UNCG among a handful of local arts organizations to lead educational series and collaborative performances.
To learn more about Made in Greensboro or to see more images taken by photographers Jerry Walford and Scott Mothersbaugh, visit the Action Greensboro website at madeingso.com. Culinary arts is a field that requires skills and allows chefs to think outside the box. Coming up after the break, we'll tell you about a talented class of GTCC students who had an opportunity to show off their culinary competitive edge. Stay with us. Welcome back to FYI Weekly. Students at Greensboro Technical Community College are literally carving a path of success for their future careers in culinary and hospitality fields. Joining me now to tell us about a recent competition the students excelled in is Albert Schmid. He is the Director of the Culinary Arts and Hospitality Management Program at GTCC. Hello Albert, welcome to the show. Thanks. Glad to be here. Oh, we're always glad to have you, and it's always nice to know what other programs are available at GTCC. Tell me about culinary arts and hospitality management. Okay, so uh, GTCC has two associate degree programs, one in culinary arts and one in hospitality management. Mm -hmm. We also have diplomas in culinary arts, mobile catering and food truck management, and then we also have one in uh, baking and pastry. Oh, wonderful. And food trucks is a new component. Back in the day, that wasn't really part of culinary arts, but now it's such a big um, favorite factor in communities where you see the food trucks popping up. Absolutely. And it's, it's wonderful for those students who have sort of an entrepreneurial spirit yes. and want to work for themselves. And so they uh, get to you know, own their own business. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Now, um, the arse, ice carving is part of culinary arts. How does that go hand in hand? Well, so uh, one of the things that the students learn is how to deal with the cold food kitchen, which we call garmage. Mm -hmm. So they learn how to make sausage and they learn how to make ice cream. And then one of the things that they learn how to do is they learn how to make uh, ice sculptures. Okay. The ice sculpture comes from a 300 pound block of ice. Mm -hmm. And then what they do is they carve off the bits that don't need to be there and okay. then they make the sculpture. Wonderful. And that takes a lot of skill because you're using a chainsaw Right. And an so, ice pick, I guess? Absolutely. So they use chainsaws and ice picks. They get to play around with chainsaws and ice. Um, and it, it can be really challenging, mm -hmm. uh, but it's, it's a wonderful thing for the students to do. All of our students learn how to do okay. it, but a few get to compete. Now, is ice carving something that someone would specialize in as a career solely ice carving, or do they incorporate that with the cooking? So, actually, um, one of our chef instructors owns an ice carving company. Wow. So, it's called Fire and Ice, mm -hmm. and uh, it's in the triad, and so, um, and he does that sort of on the side. Okay. So, he's also our head coach. His name is uh, Chef Al Romano. Oh, great name. Now, when we look at the pictures of the students at the competition, it looked like they had to brave some elements. Where did the competition take place? It, it took place in Frankenmuth, Michigan, and, so, and in the middle of January. So, okay. yes, it was Perfect very weather. cold. <laughs> so. Okay. Now, tell us, um, what skills do they need? You said they, know, they need to know how to use a chainsaw and an ice pick, but I'm envisioning artistic talent needs to go into this because they're creating actual, really impressive pieces of art. Right. So one of the great things that happened was we've competed for two years in ice carving up at the National Championship, National Collegiate Ice Carving Championship. And in 2018, one of the teams from Michigan said, we're thrilled that you guys came up, but let's be honest, pigs will fly before you win a competition or a medal. And so the returning member for the team in 2019 went up and carved a a flying pig <laughs> and won a bronze medal. Wow. And then he and his teammate did a three block ice carving mm -hmm. in a team competition and they did an X wing with um, that had the four wings and an R2D2 unit on top. Okay. And one of the wings fell off about 10 minutes outside the finish of the competition and they very quickly, very calmly carved out another wing, bonded it onto the sculpture, and then finished with another bronze medal. So with the two teammates had a bronze medal, and then we had another bronze, so three bronze medals. Well, they should never underestimate North Carolinians. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Now, aside from that, are there other events GTCC competes in, either regionally, on the state level, or nationally? So we have two. The first is Knowledge Bowl, and our team just came back from Atlantic City, where they competed at the Southeast Regional Championship, and they had um, 
a silver medal, so five silver medals wow. for the team. And it's sort of like a Jeopardy mm -hmm. um, culinary questions. And then the other competition that we do is Skills USA, mm -hmm. and we compete in culinary arts, baking and pastry, and also in restaurant service. Mm -hmm. um, the students that win the state championship get to go on to Louisville, Kentucky, uh, where they compete for the national championship. And actually in 2016, we won the national championship for uh, restaurant service. Oh, congratulations. Well, Albert, thank you so much for sharing the talents of your students in the culinary arts program. Uh, do come back again and tell us about the hospitality management side of it, and where always excited to see what our young folks are doing here and abroad. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Stay tuned for a little known fact about Greensboro as we tell you something about the city. That's coming up after the break. Stay with us. Welcome back. One way to stay informed about what's happening in the city is by attending or tuning in to city council meetings. The Greensboro City Council meetings are open to the public, but if you cannot attend, we broadcast the meetings live right here on GTN, and we also stream the meetings live on the city's website. Council meetings take place at 5.30 p.m. on the first and third Tuesdays of the month on Level 2 of the Melvin Municipal Office Building located at 300 West Washington Street. The first meeting of the month includes public comments and special presentations. Meetings on the third Tuesday of the month focus on public hearings and city business. The fourth Tuesday is reserved for a meeting as needed. To review the council meeting schedule and agendas, please visit the city's website. Here's an opportunity to learn a little something about the city. The Greensboro Youth Council is collecting new and gently used formal wear and accessories for Camille's Closet and Theo's Threads. Donations will be accepted through March 22nd. These retailers provide free outfits to teens who otherwise might not be able to afford a gown or tuxedo for prom and other special occasions. Drop-off locations are located at various city facilities for your convenience. Students will be able to shop for clothes and accessories April 11th and April 12th. The types of formal wear needed include dresses sizes 16 and up, suits, dress shirts, slacks, and accessories such as shoes, ties, evening bags, bow ties, and costume jewelry. Donated items must have been purchased or worn between 2010 and 2018. Donated items must be free of stains and tears. All zippers, buttons, and snaps must be in good working condition. And accents such as beading or jewels must be intact. For more information about making a donation or how to receive the formal wear, please call 336-373-4351 or visit the Greensboro Youth Council website. Coming up after the break, we'll showcase our department spotlight, but first, prepare to mark your calendar for all the great events happening this week on the town. Hey, this is Megan. There's lots happening around the town this weekend. It's tournament time. This marks the 19th year the Coliseum will host the ACC Women's Basketball Tournament, the most of any venue. That's right, Hoop fans. Check out the 2019 ACC Women's Basketball Tournament taking place this weekend at the Greensboro Coliseum. For more information or to purchase tickets, go to GreensboroColiseum.com. If you are looking for somewhere to practice your three-pointers or jump shots, check out the Griffin Community Recreation Center. The Griffin Community Center is open all week long to the public and features a gymnasium that can be used for basketball as well as meeting rooms and a fitness room with cardio equipment. For more information, please call 336-373-2928. This Saturday, internationally renowned illusionist Jonathan and Trisha Howley, finalists on America's Got Talent, will be performing live at the Carolina Theater at 7 p.m. This is a Vegas-style magic and illusion show with a British accent that is great for all ages. It is action-packed featuring one-of-a-kind grand illusions, expert sleight of hand, close-up magic, and dangerous escapes. Visit carolinatheater.com for more information or to buy tickets. Triad Stage in downtown Greensboro will host its preview night of Two Trains Running starting at 7.30 p.m. 
preview night means your response guides the artists as they prepare for opening night. The show is set in 1969 in the Hill District of Pittsburgh as the city plans big for what they call urban renewal. But Memphis Lee's diner stands in the way and he and his customers fight for the survival on the precipice of enormous change. Discover what really matters in this slice of life masterpiece that digs deep into the heart of the American dream. Check out triadstage.org for a full schedule of performances and special events. Don't forget, if you were looking for a fun, free family activity this weekend, look no further than our Greensboro Public Libraries. There's something for everyone, toddlers, teens, and adults. Visit greensborolibrary.org for a complete list of upcoming events. You can also find children's events for March, April, and May now online. Keep watching FYI Weekly right here on GTN to find out about more events happening on the town. Welcome back. The City of Greensboro has 23 departments and several divisions committed to serving you, our residents, and visitors. Let's go behind the scenes in our department spotlight. Today we place the spotlight on the City's IT department. The City of Greensboro has collaborated with North Carolina A&T State University and Greensboro Technical Community College on a cyber security project aimed at performing threat intelligence and information gathering of the dark web. This will allow the city and universities to identify information that could be exploited by hackers to inflict harm and cause reputational and financial damage to businesses in Greensboro. Hackers typically use the dark web to buy, sell, post, and share information they have compromised through cyber breaches. The information is then used by other hackers for illegal and malicious activities. A&T and GTCC students may be able to uncover intellectual property, usernames and passwords, credit card numbers, social security numbers, information about vulnerable systems and applications, and other information that could be used to gain unauthorized access and compromise systems. The students will present their findings to the city's information technology management team, as well as members of the local FBI office. The FBI will ensure identified information is communicated to local businesses, so action is taken to minimize the impact on our business community. Straight ahead on the other side of the break is this week's Way to Go GSO shout out. Stay with us. As we draw to a close, we always want to end on a positive note with our Way to Go GSO shout out. This week's shout out goes to the Greensboro Police Department for conducting Watch for Me NC, a pedestrian safety enforcement operation. The Greensboro Police Department is committed to preventing pedestrian injuries and deaths by conducting this public awareness campaign to educate and encourage members of the community to yield the right of way while driving, walking and cycling throughout the city. The operation was conducted at Page High School at two crosswalks between East Cone Boulevard and Golden Gate Drive. GPD also partnered with the Greensboro Department of Transportation. That concludes this edition of FYI Weekly, but you can easily stay connected to the latest city news by linking to us on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and Instagram. Be sure to download our weekly podcast, Talk City Greensboro. For all of us here at the City of Greensboro, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.